everybody. Welcome back to the Center Lane. I'm John. Uh, this is a political discussion for those of us who want to meet in the middle, get our government to work together. For God's sake, stop all this nonsense and get something done. That'd be great, huh? Okay, let's get right to it. A couple things I want to talk about today. Uh, first, I'm going to talk about um, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Yes, he is leading off today. Why? Because it's come to known, be known this past day or two that he is seriously considering a third party challenge. Whether he becomes a libertarian or a um, or just a, a uh, independent, I'm not sure because that's that's been left. I think it's going to run towards the end of the libertarian part, but I'm not sure about that. But the thing that's interesting about it is, do I think he can win? No, I don't think so. Third party is tough, no matter who you are. But he is definitely, definitely, definitely going to impact who does win between Biden and Trump if those are the candidates indeed a year from now. Which right now it looks that way, but who knows? He's going to make a huge difference. And why do I and, and which one is he going to affect? Well, see, that's the question, because he is a, he appeals to an audience that can go either way as far as who they vote for in a general or some people are just disillusioned, don't want to vote at all. So what impact is he going to have? Well, that's that's kind of the question of the day. The thing that he has going for him is, I think, is that he has a lot of um millennials and gen xers i wouldn't say so much generation z but the millennials and the gen xers really like him um so why well he speaks to them in a lot of ways i mean some of it is that he's goes on podcasts a lot like he's on joe rogan 11 million uh followers he's been on there several times he goes um bad thing about him is also alex jones likes him that's that's where he's not going dude man alex jones you know anybody that alex jones like i don't think i'm gonna be for that guy but there's an audience there and he's getting to it and he's appealing to it so that brings back the question well who's it gonna affect would that take away votes from trump potential trump voters that possibly could you know because some of those things uh the anti-covid stands anti-vaccine I'm just reading a couple of things. He has a couple of things that are really out there. Uh, AIDS is not is, is caused is not caused by HIV. Hello, and I think that's been proven that that's totally false. Uh, that the antidepressants are calling schools causing school shootings. Um, I'm not sure how that's going to play out in the general audience either. But I will say this: that kids are more medicated. Uh, today than they were when I was a kid. So, you know, can that transcend into some of these problems we're having later? I know that's up for debate. Not really what I'm here to talk about today, but that's something you can consider for yourself. The thing is, though, but Joe Rogan likes the guy. He's on that show a lot. Um, he um, appeals to people because on the other side, more, maybe the more liberal side, he's also very much for the environment. He cleaned up the Hudson River. He, um, you know, has brought up a, a lot of things, uh, child... Um, uh, what do you call it? Slavery, I guess you call it slavery or whatever. Things like that he brings to attention, which brings me to another point why he's a serious candidate. His um, fund, I think it's called the Child's Health Fund or whatever, or a PAC, I think it's a fund of some sort, is uh, quad tripled in, in donations just this past year alone. So he's gathering some steam from people uh, enough to where people are starting to take him seriously. Now everybody's crying, oh, here comes the conspiracy parts from our wonderful parties on both sides. Both sides are accusing the other one of saying, oh, you're backing this guy because you want to take away votes from Trump. And then Biden guys go, no, Trump guys are backing him because of Joe Rogan and, and uh, Elon Musk. They want to take away from Biden. So we got this back and forth going, I guess, which is only natural in today's world. But the bottom line is the guy is going to make an impact. So let's wait for the, uh, the announcement on the 9th and let's see what kind of press it gets afterwards. Mainstream press, because he's I mean, he's been getting press. I got to back to track a second. I mean, he's online getting press. He's with these podcasts, getting more press than these guys that are sitting down for interviews with MSNBC and stuff. So he's not to be taken lightly. There's people backing him up. I don't think he can win, but he's certainly going to affect both candidates and who he pulls from. He's going to pull some of their supporters. Now, some of these supporters were, were, were so disgusted, and I get this, with both major candidates, they weren't going to vote anyways. So now they're going to because he's there. So there's that. We'll, we'll put that in the we'll put that in the in the in the equation. But bottom line is it is going to be an impact, and it'll be very interesting to see how this plays out. So stay tuned on that one. Second thing I want to talk about, of course, is uh, Kevin McCarthy getting uh, the boot yesterday, or you know, uh, ousted, or every word you want. To, and there's no nice way to put it. He's out, right? Why is he out? Well, you know, he made a deal with the Democrats. Oh my God, horrible thing, right? 
But then when it came time for the final votes yesterday, did any of those Democrats come to try to save them? No. And again, it's just going back to this, if I can just for a second talk about both sides root for the other one to fail so badly that nothing gets done. All right. Not one Democrat was going to say to McCarthy, you know, maybe you're better. We're the devil, you know, versus the devil we might get. It's only eight Republicans on the other side that swayed the whole vote that made the whole thing. You know, he went, they went along with the Democrats and Austin McCarthy. So now what do we got? You know, what do we have? We got Matt Getz, who, you know, is, is, is pumping his chest out, beating his chest out. He just did a great thing. Did he? What exactly has he done lately? You know, he's a Florida guy. He wants to run for governor here. So I have a little bit of more, maybe a little more skin in the game that maybe some people that are listening. But uh, this guy is our governor. No way. They, they're from a political family. They're all His brothers, his dad, they're all, they're like political animals. You know, they, they and, and to them, this is just a big chessboard game. As soon as he put out that vote, what's he do? Starts looking for so, small donor donations immediately. I mean, the paint hadn't even dried yet, or the ink hadn't dried on the documents. So this is what we're going up against. You know, people like this that are just they're they're self they're self um, gratifying themselves. They're self gratification freaks, for lack of a better word. And it's on both sides. It's on both sides. So why you know what would be so bad about you know. Figuring out, first of all, how to fund the government, because that was a complete disaster last week. Wasted. How much time did we waste with that? You know, I mean, Biden impeachment, you know, how much time are we going to waste with that? They found nothing. And look, I'm not taking, you know, I, if Biden had done something, absolutely do something about it. But there's no evidence. And I will say this about the Trump first impeachment. I felt the same way. Really? Yes, he made that phone call, which everybody heard. and He wanted him to dig up some dirt on Biden. But in Trump's defense... You know, the Ukrainian government, that just came out secretly, if you've been following, these are a lot of little stories I kind of did find, but, you know, the Biden administration has even said, you know, there was a memo going out that came to light this this week that they're concerned about the money they're sending over to Ukraine going to where it's supposed to go because there's a lot of people there that are uh, compromised. They steal, you know, they, they don't, <laughs> you know, so you, we're just sending out money out to people and it's not going to where it needs to be going. You know, that's a problem. So... You know, at the time, I'm, I'm saying that this is before Putin uh, invaded Russia, obviously. But at the time, Trump had a legitimate concern about, you know, these guys, you know, aren't so so, so trustworthy when you give them money. You know, it, it's going to people that are enriching themselves at the, at the stake of their own people. So we had to hold people accountable. Um, and that's a tough thing to do, um, obviously, in this world today. But that has to that has to be, you know, part of the deal. We're going to give you our, our wealth. And our treasure, then, you know, a lot of people here paying taxes want to help Ukraine, but they don't want to help some warlord or some guy that's, you know, got 16 offshore bank accounts. So that's an issue. So anyways, um, but I guess to wrap it up, just that, you know, McCarthy being gone, is that something that's good for us to be a determined? But here it is. Now we got chaos. Who's going to rise in this place? How, you know, this is going to be more and more Instead of, you know, dealing with inflation and all these other things that we're trying to, you know, get our arms around, we're dealing with this stuff. So once again, you know, us, those of us in the middle are just sitting there going, we're waiting, you know, for somebody to be a grown up and, and find a consensus. And so we can move forward and it's okay to compromise, guys. This is the message from the people to whoever, you know, comes across this. It's okay to compromise. We're all not going to get what we want. We're not, you know, that, you know, that's. That's just how it is, you know? When you were a little kid and you went to the candy store and your parents had to say no sometimes. You can't have that candy. You already had candy. So that's all you get, okay? Anyways, that's it for today. I just wanted to touch on those two topics. Um, the RFK thing, interesting. You know, we'll see where that goes, uh, how that affects the race. It's gonna, it's definitely going to shake things up a bit. You know, I think you'll, you'll start seeing more coming out about that in the next a week or two. So that'll be interesting to see. And then, of course, who gets the speaker's gravel, gavel? Hmm in uh the congress and uh how much more they cannot get done it's amazing right <laughs> how much they can't do uh my name's john again and also you know thanks for watching this and hit the like button if you'd like and also i have that book there it's free audiobook free is a good word no strings attached attached just go to uh my channel or actually there's a link on the uh, end of this video here click on it and you can check out my book all right have a great day talk to you later